Wonder Hussy here, on my way out to my favorite place, the middle of nowhere. But I'm actually on my way to a place that I've been wanting to check out for a long time. It's a ghost town with a really unique, distinguishing feature. And I saw pictures of it, oh gosh, probably like two years ago on Facebook. But of course, they were shared in a Facebook group and the person who posted them was real cagey with the details and wouldn't say exactly where they were. But then fast forward about six months ago and someone actually private messaged me uh, a little bit uh, more information about where this ghost town is. I don't have the exact pinpoint, but I have a good idea of the general area. So I'm headed up to meet my good old friend, Larry. You remember Larry from uh, Eminence Front X5? He has his own YouTube channel, check it out. Anyway, uh, Larry was down to try to find this ghost town with me. And between the two of us, and what little information we have, I think we might actually track it down. I met up with Larry in Tonopah for a brief planning session before heading out into the field. Larry! Oh, hey! It's windy! It is windy! Let's go inside! Let's go inside! We knew we were looking for five different wheat paste installations in two different ghost towns up in central Nevada, but we weren't exactly sure of the precise whereabouts, so we decided to base camp at a nearby hot spring and go from there. Okay, I decided to let Larry take the lead, because that way, well, it'll keep me from speeding. And while we're driving along this desolate highway, might as well tell you a little bit more about, well, why I want to check out this ghost town so bad and what it is about these cabins in particular that I'm so fired up about. So apparently these artists from the area around this old ghost town, I don't know, some young artist couple, went away to the big city and got art degrees and they came back, I think to their hometown area, and they got old photos, uh, like, really old-timey photos of like the old settlers of the area people who actually used to live in these cabins and they blew the photos up like big scale and then they wheat pasted them if you know what wheat pasting is you get paper and then I guess you make a wheat paste out of like flour and water and then you just sort of brush it over the paper and totally saturate it and it sticks to the wall well they did that with these giant blow-ups of the photos of the old time people who actually lived in these cabins. That's right. You see, I mean, the photos I saw online were amazing. It's like this creepy old busted up, you know, abandoned living room with this, <laughs> well, you know how back then in like the 1800s, everybody always looked so serious in their photos and they always had these like expressions like their eyeballs could just bore straight through you. It just was a really well, kind of eerie effect, but also I thought it was like really cool and kind of almost in a way touching because I don't know if they were able to figure out who exactly lived in which cabin and put that particular person in their cabin or if it was just kind of like people who lived in that area and they stuck them on any old cabin. But I just thought that was a really cool idea because in a way it really makes the history come alive, you know? Like I'm always going out to these ghost towns and conjecturing wildly about who might have lived here and what they might have been doing and man it'd just be really cool to actually see photos for once of the actual people who really lived there so anyways that's what we're gonna go look for but first things first I haven't seen Larry in quite a while since we hiked to that Podesty plane crash together so we're gonna head straight to camp and just relax a little bit first Okay, we've arrived at our base camp, which is this really cool, super remote little hot spring. Larry, yes. are you ready for some gin? I could use some gin right about now. So could I. Yes. Time for a martini. But first, one simply doesn't drink a martini in the field without the appropriate attire. <laughs> That's right. I brought an evening gown and it's got a slit up to there. Woo woo. Larry. <laughs> martini time! Yes. Now, unfortunately, I didn't bring a martini shaker, so I'm just gonna use my camp coffee mug. And it's perfectly strained through the mouth hole. Cheers, Larry. Cheers. This is the way to live in the backcountry, let me tell you. No doubt, no doubt. 
Okay, that little fur wrap wasn't cutting it, man. It got a little chilly out here, so. Hopefully this camp shirt doesn't clash with my diamond earrings. <laughs> Wait a minute, what am I talking about wearing a camp shirt if I'm cold when I have this hot spring to get into? Oh my gosh, that's much more like it. Ah. Uh, now this is the way to enjoy a martini. Oh my God, Larry, what is this? It's uh, alien meat. Oh my God, how friggin' good does that look? Oh, and if you think it looks good, you should smell it. Yes. Mm. Larry, I think this calls for another round of martinis. Martinis sound good. I mixed us up another round of delicious martinis keeping in mind that I didn't want to get too sauced since we had a big day of exploring ahead of us. But thankfully, Larry had prepared a delicious, ginormous steak dinner to soak up all the booze. So we filled up our bellies and then passed out. And then the next morning, we were up bright and early and ready to find those wheat paste murals. Ghost Town, here we come. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah, let's go bang this out so we can come back and have more martinis. Okay, wow, this looks like an extremely likely candidate for a wheat paste mural or two, but it also looks like an extremely likely candidate for rattlesnakes. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some boots on. Okay, let's go find some wheat paste murals. Really cool. Oh, look, yep, there's one right there. Ah, oh wow, but look what happened. I wonder why half of it's peeled off. Like if some hater did that, or like was it somehow caused by the weather? I mean. Seems kind of hard to believe. It looks like there's a big strip that somebody peeled right down the middle and took out half of that gal's face. How disrespectful. Oh wait, I just caught a peek around the corner in this room, look. Oh my gosh, another one. This is so cool, you guys. Wow, okay, obviously this picture is not from the 1800s. It looks more like it's from the 19, I don't know, 30s, 40s. Oh look, there's like a stack of magazines on the table there. Maybe that has the date on it. It's really blurry, unfortunately, so. Bunch of old National Geographics and I can't quite make out the year, but. Anyway, it's not an 1800s photo like that other one, but that's pretty cool. I did do some more reading up on this uh, on my phone because I had Signal over camped and apparently the artists did live here in Eureka and they, uh, I don't know how they got connected with this family that had lived in the area for a long time and had a bunch of old photos. So these are actual pictures of old time residents of this area, but I don't know if that baby for sure grew up in this house. I wasn't able to find that information out. So, hmm. Oh, wow. You want to see something that's really cool? I think maybe that baby was in this house because see how it's sitting in that easy chair? And then look what's below it. I'm pretty sure that's the same exact chair. <sighs> I don't know, isn't that the same kind of upholstery pattern? It's hard to really make out, but it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a floral pattern, which is exactly what that chair is there. Holy moly. Well, where's all them Nat Geos then? <laughs> This is amazing. Wow. I salute these artists. What a cool idea. Oh, I think it's cool that there's like bullet holes in the wall, <laughs> but at least they didn't shoot up this. I mean, how would you shoot? How could you shoot up a face like that? Okay. Wow, man, this is unreal. And this is only one out of five cabins. I feel like I'm on a treasure hunt, like an Easter egg hunt or something. There's supposed to be three different cabins in this area that have those pictures on the wall. So let's go. There's one up the hill there that might be worth checking out. Man, I'm glad I put these boots on. Oh, wait, look, there's another little house there. So we'll go in there first and then we'll go up there. See if there's anything in here. Will there be a wheat paste mural in here? Oh, yeah, yay. Oh my goodness. Look how cool this old wallpaper is that's still on the wall. This is amazing. Look at that pattern and the way that it's been sort of eaten off over the years. That is cool. Oh, wow. And then look at this wallpaper. That looks really old. Although technically it's newer than that other print because you can see here where they 
Kind of just paste it over it. Oh wow, and then look here. It looks like two dudes about to engage in fisticuffs. I think I've seen that in a meme. All right, there are two guys about to start boxing and it looks like it's, maybe, you know how they used to use newspapers to insulate the walls? I guess those are maybe pages out of an old newspaper. Wow, that is friggin' old. Holy moly. Man, for being a complete wreck, this cabin has a lot of really interesting, creepy stuff hanging all over the walls. But unfortunately, no wheat paste murals. So let's keep looking. Okay, now I'm gonna go check out that other house that was up there. Gotta be careful where you step around these parts. There is all kinds of busted up detritus all over the ground. Look at all these old cans, old food cans. Oh wow, there's some of that really cool, pretty old purple glass. Little bits of china. Okay, let's go check in here, just in case. It looks pretty busted, but hey, you never know where those artists went and put up their art. Holy cannoli. Look at this place. Now look at that, it's got this weird like doorway in the corner, almost like it was a phone booth or something, like a tiny little room. What the, what do you suppose that was for? Some old core samples. Miner lived here. Wow, look at this pattern though on this wallpaper. So cool. Actually, all the different layers of wallpaper over the years, you know? Styles changed, tastes changed. <laughs> you know, I can just see like some old miner talked his wife from his fancy back east bride into coming out to Nevada to live in this godforsaken mining town. And well, she agreed to it, but she insisted on new wallpaper every year because she had the, the Goatee Ladies book, that old magazine they used to read. And so she always wanted to stay up on the trends because, well, she was a high class back east lady. And even though he dragged her out here to Nevada, she was still gonna be at the height of fashion. Okay, now let's go check out. Oh, look, there's a couple more little cabins down here I didn't even see. We'll go poke in them and then we'll go in that really creepy big house. Any wheat paste? No? Nope. Okay, let's go in the big enchilada. Now, I don't know about you, but this looks really exciting to me. Like your prototypical creepy old abandoned house. Possibly haunted, probably by demons. Okay, let's go in. Oh my gosh, this is spooky. Okay, actually I just went in there and it was so amazing that I shot so much footage that it was just too much to include in this video. So you're gonna have to watch my separate video I made about this amazing abandoned house. And when I say it was amazing, believe me, it was. Okay, we'll just come check out these little cabins here. Oh, bingo, here's another one. Woo -woo. <laughs> we found another one. Oh my goodness, look at this lady. Holy moly. You know how nobody looked very happy back then in their photos? <laughs> I guess it's because, you know, well, it's because you had two babies at once and life wasn't very fun, or it's because having your photo taken was a big deal back then. And so, you know, people were very serious about it. And I think you had to hold still longer, maintain your expression. So it was probably hard to hold a smile for a long time. <laughs> Look at this baby. Oh my God. Talk about a horror movie. <laughs> Gosh, these wheat paste murals are really like a dream come true for, well, me specifically, because I'm always making up stories about the people who lived in these places. And well, wouldn't it be interesting if every abandoned place I went into had a picture on the wall of who used to live there? That's pretty friggin' cool. So whoever she was, looks like she had two little babies, maybe more, probably more. See what's back here. Oh, the bathroom. <laughs> wow, look how old timey this is. Everything in here is so filthy. Look at the faucets. Oh my goodness. Nice little bathroom though, considering you know it's not that big of a house. Oh, it's just so cute. There was even a little light right over the vanity mirror. Oh, so when she did that crazy hairdo, you know. Look, it was wired for electric though too. Look at the old light switch. How cool is that? Okay, let's go look in this. This looks like it was probably just a workshop. Garage or something. Oh, wow. What do you suppose they did in here? 
kind of creepy. Maybe this is where they like processed whatever it was they were mining. Look at this lever. Holy cannoli. <laughs> what was this? It almost looks like a brewery, but I wouldn't want to drink whatever beer they brewed in that thing. Ugh. Look at the toxic chemicals. And in fact, it smells real funky in here. Holding my breath. Probably because it's full of ammonium alum, a hundred pounds ugh, from Allied Chemical, General Chemical Division in Morristown, New Jersey. Oh, wow, look, what was this? I thought it was a scale at first, but then it's got a motor or an engine. <laughs> what on God's green earth? This is creepy. Look at this giant deep freezer. Now this would be the place to find a body, but today's not our lucky day. Okay, wow, I said this was probably just a workshop and it turned out to be like the most epic workshop in the history of workshops. And then look in here. It's in the trash. Wow, something from the Frank Edwards Company in Burlingame, California, some kind of auto part. Wow, Burlingame, that's a long way from here. That's in the San Francisco Bay Area. Okay, so we've pretty much checked in every building over there, but there's one more wheat paste mural somewhere at this site. So maybe there's a few buildings over here where it looks like there used to be a mine. So we're gonna go over here and check these buildings next. Okay, somebody has been here and painted some real creepy graffiti. 2020, Master Goggles. Oh wow, look in here. Shelf after shelf after shelf of, well, I don't know, these weird little, they look like ice cream containers, but they're full of crushed ore, I guess. But no wheat paste murals, so on to the next building. Let's see what's in here. Oh my word. Will y'all look at the girth and length of those hoses. Oh, the winch. It's the winch operator. Look at that. Dang, look at the size of that winch. I mean, look at how the scale of this is amazing. This must have been a giant friggin' mine. Okay, I think I figured it out. I went back and read the article and the artist said they placed three murals in this part of the ghost town or in this ghost town. Not three different cabins, just three murals. And if you remember, that one that we went into had two. It had the one of the baby in the chair and then the one of the woman. So I think we found all three murals in this ghost town. Now it's time to head just a few miles down the road and try to find the other two. If I just would have done my research properly beforehand, I could have saved myself untold time and energy. <laughs> but as it was, Larry and I spent all afternoon driving and hiking around, poking our noses into all kinds of abandoned mining structures, none of which contained any wheat paste murals, but all of which had plenty of interesting stuff to look at. But I didn't come on this trip to look at mining machinery. I wanted to find the final two wheat paste murals. And it was late in the day when it finally occurred to me that instead of driving around burning up time and gas randomly looking in every old building I came across, I should just find a place where I had cell signal and reread the information I had. Which, when I finally did so, led to a magnificent duh moment when I realized that the name of the second ghost town was clearly mentioned in my intel and all I had to do was look it up to find exactly where it was and then drive straight there. Oh, I see a cabin! Oh, I see another cabin! Oh wow, yeah, look at that tailings pile. Okay, I think we're almost there. Oh my god, I am freaking exhausted and it's depressing to think that most of it is due to unnecessary hikes. <laughs> oh well. Okay, we don't have a ton of daylight left and we still have to get back to camp and make those martinis, so I'm just gonna blaze into these houses and find these dang murals. And this one here looks like a great place to start. Well, let's go on in. Oh my goodness. Look, Nevada Bell telephone address. Oh my goodness. Uh-oh, I don't want to say it too loud because I don't want to give it away, but here's one, look. Oh no! Look, somebody gouged her eyes out. Why would you do that? And it says, Mine Explorers on YouTube. 
why? Oh, if anybody watching this watches the mine explorers on YouTube, well, you can tell them that I'm very disappointed in their behavior. You know what I mean? Like this poor woman grew up in or lived in this house and for some idiot to come in here and gouge her eyes out and write on her forehead, like just shows massive lack of respect and class. Boo. Okay, well, that was one. Man, this house is creepy, though. I mean, I'm sure it was real nice back in the day when that poor woman lived here, but right now... Ugh. Oh, wow, the bathroom. Look at this. Yikes, snakes coming through. <laughs> Don't even want to breathe in here, but look at that freaking tile on the bathroom, how bright it is compared to the rest of the house. Oh, my gosh. Aww. Okay, well, even though it was desecrated, we found one. There's one more mural somewhere around here. Okay, let's look in this house. This looks like it might be a likely candidate. Man, what is wrong with people? Oh my goodness. Looking for that last week. <gasps> there it is. Woo, we found it. Okay, now this one looks like it's just water damage. Wasn't purposefully done. So no need to rant and rave in here. But look how cool that is. It's one, two, three, four, five women. I wonder if they were all sisters. Or maybe one of them is the mother and those are her daughters. And they all lived here in this house. How cool is that to think about what their lives were like? I mean, those dresses they're wearing look... Well, they're either Mormons or this was from like 1880 maybe? Long time ago. Okay, well, found all the murals, but I don't know. There's still a couple more cabins up here that I thought, well, while I have daylight anyways, I might as well go inside and see if there's anything cool in here. You know what I mean? You never know. Seems silly to come all the way out here and then not explore everything thoroughly. Aw, someone's little farmhouse. Mine house. <laughs> well, low ceiling in here. Oh my gosh, what is this? The Bible? Oh, Reader's Digest. Close! More or less the same thing. Oh, wow, look at this newspaper. Arabs extend price freeze. Oh, the Salt Lake Tribune from Monday, March 18th, 1974. Oh my gosh, you guys remember that Arab, uh, wasn't that like the oil embargo? Nixon scores in Nashville at the Grand Ole Opry. What, what was Nixon doing at the Grand Ole Opry? Oh my goodness. This paper is amazing. Ed Pearman. He looks like a real stud. Holy cow. Oh my god, look at this. RCA Victor Record Club. Remember those? The best of Peter Nero. Oh, what's this? I mean, just enough to... I mean, you see this guy kissing something and then it says something about mashed potatoes? I don't know, man. Oh, I see. Give him our mashed potatoes. He'll think they're yours. I see. So the potatoes were so delicious that he just had to passionately kiss her. Little did he know, she just dumped him instant in a bowl. <laughs> Too funny. Oh my god, these old magazines are a riot. Look, party ideas with pressure cookers. <laughs> Tell that to those Boston Marathon bombers. Okay, enough of that old paper. Man, cool place. Lonely old toilet. At least there's two of them keeping each other company. All right, we did it. I mean, it only took seven hours of driving and hiking around these mountains to find them all, but we did locate all five wheat paste murals. And it was actually pretty cool that most of them were relatively, well, undamaged. I still feel bad for the poor lady in that house. And if you're watching this video, whoever wrote that on her forehead and whoever tore her eyes out, be warned. Because her ghost is probably going to come and haunt you. And just when you think you got away safely, you'll be laying in your bed one night and all of a sudden you'll feel a cold wind come through your window and you'll feel a ghostly touch reaching on your manly parts and then you'll feel the even colder touch of a steel blade a ghostly knife and she's gonna get you if you know what i mean 
So, lesson learned, don't gouge out old women's eyes on wheat-based murals in historic old cabins. But wow, what an epic adventure. That was the, one of the most fun treasure hunts I've ever been on. But now it's six o'clock, definitely quitting time, uh, or at least time to go back to camp and celebrate with a martini. Cheers, Larry, Bye. to another successful adventure. Another one, yeah.